Good. Raiders. Oakland, L.A., Oakland, Vegas, Raider Nation, wherever, forever. You got your old Uncle Mosh and Raiders fan radio from Murph's Man Cave, taking a lighter journey into the dark side. Sit back, put your feet up, pop a top, and enjoy the ride. Here we go. We miss you, we love you, and we'll see you in the Hall of Fame. When you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players, you have a great organization, and you tell them one thing, just win, baby. That's my point. Way up the middle, intercepted to the piano at the 50. Time running down. Houston football, and I think Houston victory. The Houston Raiders have scored on the most dreamy, unbelievable, absolutely impossible dream of a play. Well, I love this team. I think this team can win. I think this team can win. What is up, Raider Nation? Welcome to uh, Raiders Fan Radio Live, to RFR Live. It's the morning. It's Friday morning. It's December 14th, and it is uh, uh, Good Morning, Raider Nation. You've heard of Good Morning Football. This is Good Morning, Raider Nation. This is uh, kind of an impromptu thing, but uh, we thought it would be kind of fun to hop on here on the YouTubes and do a little live stream from the Fan Cave because we have a very, very special guest in town. So without further ado, welcome to Raiders Fan Radio, Kevin the Raider Nerd. Good! Boy, did I uh, accidentally talk over the lead there. Sorry about that. that that's okay. That, that, that's okay. No one's listening to us anyway, so we're all good. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a that was a fantastic Robin Williams. Good morning, Vietnam. There, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. Here, Appreciate let me give you the that. let me do the appropriate button here. There we go. Hey! There we go. Yeah, that's there right. we go. <laughs> I had to reach over for that uh, for the soundboard late because I'm so used to Uncle Mosh now running the board over there, man. So I'm. Is that why you frantically uh, grabbed for that? I, I did. I, I yeah. I was absolutely <laughs> frantically grabbing for it. So welcome to the fan cave, man. Welcome to Merce Fan Cave, dude. This is like a dream come true. It is wonderful in here, man. Oh, cool, yeah. man. Thank you. You even got you. all the nerdy stuff for me, all the Star Wars. Absolutely. Stuff. I love it. I love absolutely. It, you don't yeah. kind of you know you don't see all the Star Wars and Lord of the Rings off uh, you know when you're doing we're doing Raiders <laughs> fan radio. But yeah, definitely, we we definitely rock all that stuff. And you got the good, we got the movies there for the backdrop for you. I love it. I love it. You know what I mean? The Raider Christmas tree. I'm digging that. Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So, uh, so uh, we do have at least one person in the chat there. Michael. Good morning, Michael. Appreciate you joining us here on Raiders Fan Radio. Michael, thanks for coming on, brother. Appreciate it. So, uh, Kevin, so you're passing through town Mm -hmm. because you're on your way to Cincinnati to go see our beloved Raiders take on the Bungles. That's right. Yeah, the uh, we're uh, looking forward to this. We got a we got a big crew coming in. As you know, Raiders love to travel, and so uh, we're pillaging the jungle, nice. as we say. Nice. And uh, Gorilla Rill is already there. Seen a lot of people show up already. It's great. So cool. uh, I'm really looking forward. And you're going to see the Mando Raider nerd there too. So yeah. nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Kevin, if you haven't seen Kevin uh, dress up for Raider games, uh, it's awesome. His his costume. Do you call it a costume? Is it a uniform, Kevin? It, Tell me what do you. It's weird because I'm part of the Star Wars guys and the G.I. Joe guys where we dress up. We call them costumes, but apparently when it comes to Raider Nation, it needs to be a uniform. <laughs> uniform, absolutely. Hey, we're so. getting people on here. There's a Salvador. We got Ron, Dez, Chris Black, Raider 64, uh, Raider J. Nice. Thanks for coming on, guys. Absolutely. Appreciate you all joining us here in Merce Fan Cave for, uh, for Good Morning, Raider Nation. Good morning, Raider Nation. You know, I've always I wanted to do my whole life, Kevin. I've always wanted to do a talk show. And so here we go. Uh, knowing Kevin was going to come through town, we, we knew we were going to record some stuff this morning. And we're like, ah, let's flip on the cameras, man. Let's go ahead and <laughs> let's go live with this thing. So good morning. Football's over. Yes. So now we'll go with good morning, Raider Nation. So look, hey, there's our buddy Kevin, the UK there. Kev, What's up, Kev? How are you, buddy? That's our, very our cool. Our buddy from Scotland. And by the way, I just want to say thank you, Uncle Mosh, for letting me borrow your, uh, your chair here. I <laughs> promise to leave some of it intact. Maybe I'll put on your readers over here. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah, put on his readers with the Al Davis chain, man. Absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. So good to so you got um so tell us a little bit about what you got planned around the game. You said you're gonna meet up with a lot of the other super fan. Can I call you super fan, Kevin? Yes. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I'm not as dedicated as a lot of other super fans are, but I mean if you're gonna if you're gonna dress up like me in any type of weather, <laughs> yes. Uh the 
t- I remember the hottest one was Tampa when we went to Tampa. Uh, was it last year or the year before? Man, that was hot. Uh, that was the one where we won like in the last like few seconds. Oh, yeah, the Seth Roberts, yeah, the Dread Seth Pirate Roberts, yeah, Roberts yeah. walk-off yeah, game. Yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, yeah. we got stuff going on. Uh, it, we got uh, um, a party going on. I think it's a Saturday night and, of course, a tailgate in the morning. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's really That's good. very, very cool. And a very winnable game. So, yeah. A very winnable game. And that's, uh, you know, let's, let's talk about that. Let's get into some Raider football a little bit. You know, Kev, it's been a rough year. Um, it's to say just the least. Just a tad. Just a little bit. I mean, kind of went unexpected on us, you know. Um, but the good news is, is that with a win like Pittsburgh, it, it it invigorates the fan base a little bit. It gives us at least something to be excited about. It gives us something to look forward to. And now I may have let my, let my fandom get a hold of me a little bit. I may have gone off the rails a little bit, but I think it's fully feasible that we beat a down Cincinnati team this weekend. We beat the Donkeys, and we go into Kansas City, who's now battling for their life, not only for the number one seed, but for the division. How cool is that with the Chargers win last night? So, anyway, so what do you think, Kev? You think, this, let's start with just Cincinnati. How winnable is this game for us? Totally winnable, and you're saying what we're thinking. I mean, come on. Let's put it this way. You're always saying what we're thinking. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. No, this game is totally winnable. Uh, Cincinnati's down. Uh, Raiders are on kind of a high. What's kind of funny, though, is that, and I've seen this before, when your team – our Raiders aren't having a good year. It feels like almost every win's almost like a, a semi Super Bowl win. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. But when you do it against like uh, a team like Pittsburgh, it, it's an extra good feeling. It really, really is, and that really does a lot for a team going into the next game. You know, because you have a rhythm. You know, there's a certain mojo that you carry with you. And I think that uh, I think this is a very winnable game. You know, Raiders. I think they're only. Uh, I think they're only. Is it Cincinnati's only favored by like three points? I think so. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. not much. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so I, I think it's going to be great. I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. And of, of course, it's it's all about Raider Nation. Raider Nation showing up. So word, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, good stuff, man. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be fun. Did you get a chance to watch the game? You traveled early this morning. Did you get a chance to stay up and watch the game? All I last did night? watch uh, that game last night, uh, San Diego at KC. I, I I was glued to it. You know, I, I I wanted to see how it came out. And what's funny is when it was like what they were up like fourteen nothing. Yeah, yeah. I I'm like I know I know this is a classic. Philip Rivers, something's going to happen here, and uh, sure enough, there it is. It, it happened, and and oh, as much as as much as we uh, we hate Philip Rivers and all of his kids, <laughs> I tell you, man, uh, that was that showed something between the legs there, going for that too. Oh my gosh, you are kidding! Absolutely, what a what a what a yeah. What a, what a, what a, well, we'll just call it ballsy. What the heck, yes, man? That yes. was a ballsy play. You know, and I, I like that. I like it. <laughs> I love it when, when coaches do stuff like that. And, you know, I'm not, not to praise and the freaking you know chokers here. They but. were doing it straight off. They did not walk off the field. They were ready to do yeah, it. Yeah, they were ready to go yeah. with it. Yeah. yeah. And much like the Titans did this year, they did the, something, sim, something similar. And, you know, I think that when you're, you know, when you're on the road and, spe- but, they had so much on the line, and that was the difference. Is that not only, I mean, we're talking number one seed, not only the division, but I mean, they potentially had their season on the line, and they went for two. That was that was pretty Didn't good. Did the Raiders do that in that good year, 2016, first game against the Saints? That's because, the Saints, yeah, because yeah, they absolutely. knew they 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 knew they had the Saints on the rope there. They, they and absolutely, I, yeah, and Crabtree, I think, caught that two point conversion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. That was that was great, and that was when r- the whole riverboat Jack thing started, right? Yeah. With the with Jack Del Rio. So hey, uh, so we got some more people jumping in the chat here, man. So many uh, people appreciate Monster you. Mash. Monster Mash Ken is in there. Yeah. Oakland Raiders fan. Uh, Consigliere Salt. You know who that is? No, who's that? That's a former co-host of the show. Really? Yeah, what's up, Sonny? Sonny? Absolutely, Sonny. Sonny. I was just asking about you, brother. How what's are up, you? man? Absolutely. Glad to see Sonny in there. That's fantastic. Hold Alex on, hold on. I, I got to show this. I got to show this. Got okay. to show Oh, there we go. Yeah, hold on. Let me get you on camera. There we go. There we go. Uh, Kevin. Fans Radio, baby. Kevin's Woo. rocking the shirt, man. The got original. this in uh, Tennessee. Was it two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's where we, where we all met. Uh, was we, we met Kevin when he when he came up and we did our our tailgate party from uh, from Nissan Stadium there that was awesome and uh, so yeah yeah that's that's cool man appreciate you you, you rocking the shirt there man and and uh, and thank you to Sonny but for by the way in, I man. think you only projected maybe one or two people showing up but we got more than one or I two think people. we got one or two more people. I'm like I don't know Kevin I'm like I don't know if he's gonna watch this I'm like it's the morning I'm like you know it's like what 7 a.m. on the West Coast I'm like I don't know if we're gonna get anybody in here or not and sure enough a lot of you are showing up here so we we 
appreciate you guys uh, uh, checking totally. us out. Totally, really. Let's go. Let's guys. see if let's let's since the chat's live here. Let's see if we got any uh, questions or anything in there. If you got anything, guys, you yeah, want, roll you them out. Let's hear hit them. Us on, yeah. We're live. Uh, Monster Mash Ken, we got to get one of those hats. I know uh, how about Kevin's hat is killer, man. The, oh, yeah. the bowler hat is awesome with the Raider Nerd logo on there. Uh, Mojo asked, "When did this start?" It's flippable too. Yeah. Oh, that. there, there you go. Hold on, let me get you on camera. There yeah, you go. Look, I got this, and then you know, I, and then my rally cap when the Raiders are down, I turn around. And, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, uh, so uh, Oakland Raiders fan there says uh, they might run all over us since AJ Green is out. We uh, have a better chance. I agree. And yes, stopping the run and stopping tight ends are the two things that we have mm-hmm. to do. And uh, we did a pretty good job of that uh, against the Steelers. And considering, look, it wasn't Le'Veon Bell. It wasn't even James. Connor, but still the idea that we slowed down the run game uh that was enough didn't we kind of do that with kelsey too didn't we keep him to a certain I he was pretty remember. quiet i don't remember what the, uh, yeah. no 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 did he get a, no that was the no he set the freaking record oh that's right yeah, I forgot. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah no. that's right that's yeah, right he set yeah, the record yeah, yeah. You know, like 168 yards or something yeah. crazy like that but uh so uh, but uh so let, let's go uh let's let's hit a couple topics here kevin while we got you so there's been a lot of news that's been going on in Raider Nation. I so. just got an NFL one about the Davis Amari trade. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah, I said that it was uh, Davis made the trade decision, not uh, our coach. Really, and yes. that's what like a lock and forth. Yeah, report? Davis made trade decision. That was that was his go. He said he decided to do it. That's so. crazy. I, so you know there there goes the theory that John Gruden is just oper- like he's not gone rogue and he's not no. just operating like he's not some crazy dictator and give it up to mark davis for owning this stuff i know man that's I'm what we've needed yes, from him for a while yes you know totally agree yeah i totally agree uh paul edgerton our buddy in the uk says how much does uncle mark uncle mosh charge you to use his chair <laughs> 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 that's awesome so uncle mosh i he knows you were coming over i didn't tell him that you were going to adorn the southern annex of the murph sand cave desk <laughs> But um, I'm sure. So I'm, what is yours? The, I'm, I'm, what, what is your annex? What is that over there? Well, mine's the original. Kevin. Okay. I'll yeah, mine's the original. Yeah. So this is this is just the Murph's fan cave. So, so, so where where's the line? Where's the line? <laughs> <laughs> the line yeah. I don't know where the Mason Dixon, Dixon line. I guess it's about right here behind your monitor, maybe. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's pretty funny. But all right, so let's let's hit a couple topics. So, uh, we, and we didn't talk about this much on uh, on Raiders Fan Radio this week because we had so much to get to. But uh, tell us what you think about Reggie McKenzie getting let go, man. What do you think about him uh, letting Big Reggie? You know, we all respect and understand and, and what he did for this team and the good things, but kind of how it's played out. The criticism has been he hasn't built the roster. That's even even with even if you leave Khalil Mack here and leave Amari Cooper here and leave Bruce or leave anybody that's left, even if you leave them all on the roster. The argument is, well, they still wouldn't have been good enough to win the division. Yeah. Not even go to the playoffs and win a Super Bowl, let alone that, but not even good enough to win the division, and so it led to his departure. So what do you think, Kevin? I'm going to echo something you said earlier in the last episode where I will always be forever grateful. He's always going to be a Raider to me. Uh, He did something, uh, not just, I'm, I'm not talking about the draft, but getting us out of cap hell. That was huge. That was huge. And having to go through a couple of bad years there and, and, and pay out those dead money contracts and get us out of there, that was huge. And I will always be forever grateful for that. Of course, he, he gets his criticism from, from his draft choices, obviously. And I think that it was just – I think it ran its course, to be honest with you. You know, I know a lot of fans were calling for his head, you know, fire Reggie. And, and to a certain degree, I can understand that. And I also agree with it. There was a, I mean, when you look at back at all the draft choices, like, oh, my God, who are these guys? You know, a few of them stuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A few of them stuck, and that's good. But I, I think that when you bring in someone like John Gruden, you know – you, you got to kind of let uh, him do his thing. I yeah, mean, yeah, you know, yeah, and, and, uh-huh. and I don't have an issue saying this is John Gruden's show because, you know, I'm sure he's going to have some input on whoever the new general manager is going to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, so I, I, I saw it coming and I'm fine with it. I agree. And, you know, and I think that I, I, he used the term new football executive, you know, uh, Gruden did. And so I think that's that's interesting is that and that's where I think it's going to be someone like a more in an advisory type role. And that's where you hear the name Bruce Allen thrown out. I like Holmgren just because I like Holmgren because he's a Bay Area guy. He's a San Jose guy. Um, 
he actually coached at the school my dad worked at, Oak Grove High School in San Jose, California. So um, I, I like Holmgren, and I think that he can provide, even if he doesn't come to work for the Raiders, I think he can provide a lot of mentorship to Gruden mm-hmm. on how to then. Plus, they have a history. That's exactly. Yeah. And Gruden will respect him. He's got the rings. He's got the, 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 the history in the league. He's mentored a young quarterback. He's had all that. And so I think that that would be a, a, a good uh, fit. But we've heard Scott McLuhan thrown out there. We've heard a lot of names get thrown around out there but i think whoever that is isn't going to be a quote general manager i don't think it's going to be somebody that we're used to seeing that's going to come in and and take the role like what reggie had i think just let's hope they're a good money guy (laughs) that's it yeah let's hope they're a good money guy by the way uh you said that uh that sunny's on here i love this he says what's a better love story kevin and winnie cooper from the wonder years or al and his raiders (laughs) oh my gosh i love it That's a tough That's one, a tough but one. in present company, I'm going to say Alan the Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, we, didn't, we got any other questions in there we want to hit? Uh, so we're in there about the O-line, banged up O-line. So, yeah, that's uh, that comes from Mojo. That's going to be interesting, Kevin. You know, we have a... Uh, we kind of had a banged up O line to begin with, mm-hmm. and then now here with with Mongo going out this last week, and I didn't see as if if uh, uh, Kalechi is still out. Did you I by did chance? Not. I didn't I see did that not. either. So, uh, but yeah, that's definitely going to be an issue. The good news is is that when in terms of the pass rush with the Bengals, it's kind of Geno Atkins from an interior position, and that's it. And that leads me to my next question. I want to ask you about who you think the MVP is so far this year for the Raiders, and I'm going to give you mine first. I think it's Rodney Hudson. I agree. I completely, of, completely agree. Yeah. I've been agreeing with you all year. Uh, but I also, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I know it's going to be an unpopular opinion, but I have to also give it to Carr because of what he's Ooh, having to go through and deal with. And uh, think about all the crap he's got. But look what oh, he's yeah. look what he's doing now. He has he hasn't like crawled into a hole. Think about this for a second. He hasn't crawled into a hole. He's always up there. I mean, I know he's telling us stuff that we we've heard. We don't always want to hear, but it, at least he isn't hiding in a hole somewhere. He's being the leader. He's taking it. You know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I would I would give it to our center first. Absolutely. Yeah, Good deal. Definitely. I like and I like that angle that you, and what you brought up about Carr because I'm with you on that. It's I think it's important to recognize what that you know it's it's easy to be front and center when things are going well yes. and we've when seen it's not oh it's bad no and we've seen how many quarterbacks that crumble underneath the weight of things not going well and the ones that persevere through it and the ones that push through it the guys that that you know let the criticism roll off their back they stay focused on their task whatever it may be that those are the ones that that prove to be the best over a long my, period of time and that's what Carr's doing my so. one advice i would give to Carr is to hire a pr manager because I think that he should learn a little bit more about how he goes up on the press now and he goes up on that podium and maybe not necessarily be as truthful as we want him to be, but kind of stop saying some of the stuff he's been saying, you know, and because it, it feels like it's kind of a broken record sometimes. That's, I'm with you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, that's I, the that's one that, what I would do. The ones that used to get me were the, the, the ah, shucks, it's all my fault. Well, no, sometimes it's not, Derek. And it's okay to, you know, there's a difference between calling someone out or you know what I'm taking a shot mm-hmm. at someone or holding them accountable. You know what I mean? And and I think that holding people accountable is important for someone in a leadership position. And so you can do that. That's when you see, even as much as I despise him, Philip Rivers jaw jacking people on the on the field, he's holding them accountable. He's not yelling at them, telling yeah. them, you suck. He's telling them, come on, man, be better. Like, do your job. And that's, that's it's okay to certainly do uh, that. I uh, like what Paul Edgerton here, he says, uh, Jared Cook is also a good uh, um, pick for a runner-up for MVP, yes, I think. Yes, that's a good call. Yeah. Good call, Paul. I, I, I yeah. think that, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the, uh, he's in the runner-up for, uh, what is it, the um, uh, Commitment to Excellence Award they yes. do every year. Yeah, I've yep, been to yep. that a few times. Have uh, you really? Yeah, I have. Yeah, Where I was it? there. I was there. For, uh, part be, I'm part of the Atlanta Raider Booster Club. Okay, and uh, they've uh, we've gotten tickets through. Uh, was it the steering committee? I think that's what it is. And uh, I I've been to a few of them actually. Wow. Uh, I was at the second time that um, number twenty four was there. So yeah. Wow. No kidding. D twenty four, dude. Wow. <laughs> that is so cool. Which, yeah. well, well, hold on. Willie Brown or Charles Woodson? 
Charles Woodson. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which, yeah, it's a black, black tie event. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Represent totally really cool. today. I got my C. Marcel and... Reese was there. I was there when Marcel oh, Reese. Oh, yeah. man. Come By the way, on. I have a Marcel Reese story I got to tell you later, so. Well, tell me now. Okay, okay, I'm, all right. I'm cool, such cool, a cool. honk for Marcel Reese. I freaking, he's like what? my all, I want to say he's my all-time favorite Raider, but out of the, look, we had some dark days in there, Kevin. Yes, yes. And he was like one of the lone bright spots of our team. And I, 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 I seriously, I could do a Marcel, this is going to sound really nerdy, but it's appropriate, right? <laughs> I, I could do a Marcel Reese podcast. I freaking love, he to me was one of the most unique talents we have ever seen in the NFL, especially that ever wore a Raider uniform. And it is an absolute shame that our coaching staff never used him in a way more creative. I know. And I yeah. think of, look, don't easy Raider Nation. He was Nation, totally underutilized. But, but, and if can you imagine if he would have been a Patriot? Oh, what would God. Bill Belichick have done with somebody like Marcel that's an absolute matchup nightmare regardless of where you put him? You could put him at running back, fullback, tight end, wide receiver. It doesn't matter where you put him in his offensive position on the field that's not on the line. But whether it's – it doesn't matter. He's a matchup problem for a linebacker, for a safety, for – it used to drive me crazy. I'm like, why is this guy not like the feature of our freaking offense? And there was always in a, you know, and look, and I know we had Darren McFadden and we had other guys, but he was just, he was so fun to watch play. And it was like when he would see when he would shine, when he freaking, when, when they did feature him and they gave him yeah. the ability to make plays, especially in space, he was awesome. Man. So anyways, so that's, that's how I, <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I'm a Marcel well, I love guy. How, so. I love your story. You got your jersey sign you talked about in the last episode. That was great. Oh, man, I'm telling you. Thank you. Yeah, because he was just, it was so, and it was impromptu. Like, it wasn't planned. It just, it just happened, man. So it was, it was very, very cool. But anyway, so tell me your Marcel so, story. Okay, so I didn't get to meet him per se, but this is an interesting little side story. So I went to London to see the Raiders play, was it 2013? I think it was four. I can't remember, uh, but I went to go see them there in London, and that's where I met like a lot of the people from the uh, Silver and Black UK, all those wonderful people there. And uh, we were having a party where Fred Blitnikoff, uh, Lincoln Kennedy was there. It was the uh, Saturday night party, uh, and we were celebrating uh, Blitnikoff's uh, cause. It was great, and all the Raider super fans were there. Gorilla Rilla, uh, I think it was um, Oaktown Pirate. The last time I saw him before he passed away. Oh wow! Um, but uh, we were trying to figure out where it was and I was there with my friends and I was dressed up in my whole Raider nerd gear with a Mando gear it was like it was like the version 1.0 I had a different helmet back then and uh, we were trying to figure out where it was and these other Raider fans were showing up it was this older couple and a younger girl it might look like it might have been like their 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 granddaughter maybe and uh, they're all do you know where the Raiders club is I, said, I think we knew follow us and we we're kind of talking to them they were great and and uh, they're asking us about our fandom turned out it was Marcel Reese's parents Oh, no kidding. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. They were really, really cool. They didn't say who they were. It wasn't until afterwards when we were at the party, like, do you know who those were? And uh, it was really cool. So, oh, yeah. that's <laughs> awesome, man. That is too cool. That is too cool. Well, uh, appreciate again, uh, everybody that's jumped in the chat. Gosh, I, yeah, I was, I'm shocked. I, I, I told Kevin when we started, I'm like, we might get one person maybe. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. So, I love it. I really appreciate so, all you guys jumping on in the last second. Man. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Ashton, Kev, Monster Mash, Ken. Sonny's in there. That's so cool, man. Uh, Sonny says morning, Sonny. mornings with Murph needs to be a thing. I agree, and all we need to do is I need to start making money from podcasting. Yeah, I know, right? And then I can do that because I do have a job. I took the day off today because I knew Kevin was going to be in town. I took the day off, too. We don't do this for free. <laughs> we don't do, yeah, exactly. So, so but anyway, I, I would absolutely love to. So NFL Network, if you're watching and you need somebody to, to ride shotgun there with Nate and Kay and Good Kyle and Schrager. Morning. There we go. I love Absolutely. it. I love the sound of that. All right, so Kevin, let's hit a couple more topics yes. uh, before we go. Uh, I want to ask you now. Look, all right. I still have my. Let me let me show it here. I still I still have the stay in Oakland sign, despite my. But you put my, it at a camera shot. A, <laughs> <laughs> despite my tirade against the city of Oakland, not the fans of of from Oakland, but the city of the politicians. Um, I kind of, I kind of took my shot this this past week. Oh, and, you took a good one. Uh, I was thank like, you, yes, thank you. Yes. And you know what's funny? Go is, go. <laughs> you know what's funny is that I've heard one negative comment from anybody, and I expected someone somewhere this because it's the internet. I could I just think, hear the spittle coming out of your mouth. Oh my gosh, I'm so fired up. <laughs> and so I figured someone would, say, but I heard one, and in fact, I've heard nothing but but positive responses. And I went through and I read some of the mayor of Libby Schaff from Oakland. And I read through a lot of the comments from when she made the statement. I read 
it's about universal that everyone else feels the way that I do, regardless of where they live. So that made me feel a little better that I wasn't just going off on some crazy thing. And I was, I was really afraid that I was going to insult or offend the people that live there. And because I don't. And so I, I understand that my opinion is that of somebody that I used to be, I used to live there. I used to be part of that. I'm not now. And so I want to know my role in that and not you know, step on anyone's toes and disrespect Understood. anyone's, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I really wanted to make sure that I tempered that, but by all accounts, I didn't step on anyone's toes, thankfully. And so it, not, not cause it's just nice to be affirmed, but because we're so passionate about this stuff, like sometimes I wonder like, am I going off half cocked here? But to, to read the responses and to hear that, you know, I'm not necessarily going off half cocked that there is validity to that passion that comes out in you. So anyway, so all that said, what do you think? Because you're an out of market guy too, but you're originally from Southern California, yes. so you're like like my buddy Mikey. You became an LA Raider fan originally, yeah, right? Yeah, it was like right actually right after they won uh, the championship, their second championship in Oakland. Uh, they came on my radar. My, my best friend and his family they were Raiders fans, and then when they moved to uh, LA, I was all about it. And so, uh, you know, and then of course I stayed with them when they moved back to Oakland. You know, I, I just it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a second thought. You know, and so this whole thing with Oakland, uh, I, there's just a, it's it's a huge money grab, and I'm also convinced that there's still corruption there. Uh, and I'm and I'm going to say this for the record: I think that Mark Davis has done everything that he could to try to stay in Oakland. And I know a lot of people got on him for like wanting to get out of there and because he's so cheap and, you know, he can't afford anything and whatever it be. But know what? I, I think he's tried everything in his power to stay there. And this kind of proves it. it. I mean, the way it looks now, that's just going to be an empty field right now. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's really sad. It really, yeah. really is. Now, now the, the A's are moving, right? Yeah, the A's are going to move yeah. to their their new proposal. Of course, who knows? We'll see what happens if they finally. Yeah, they dig. did sign a ten year lease a few years ago, which yeah. kind of like was the nail, the last nail in the coffin for the Raiders and, stand there. And they've had listen, and they've had seven stadium proposals for the A's oh, in thirteen years. Yeah, this whole rooted in Oakland thing and all that stuff—it's just silly. But you're right. So the last one is at the Howard Terminal, which mm -hmm. is which is uh, which is up. If oh, I'm trying to remember the map of the, it's north of of where the the Coliseum is now. Um, but the, the but it's off site yeah. regardless of where it is mm -hmm. it's off site so you're right so that whole area is just going to sit empty and it's just i don't know it's yeah, just a it, shame that none of it ever I, worked out i feel out. for the fans there it, it 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 actually it's a gut punch and and i'm i'm i i i feel it because i feel their pain and all the 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 time and money and investment and it's it's one of those things where like I look I look over there it's just it's a money grab it's greed and I, I think that uh, the Raiders did everything they could to stay there and uh, when the opportunity to open up in Vegas came I, I'm like sure and then them not deciding to them to come back and renew their lease after what happened don't blame them one bit yeah absolutely absolutely right yeah. and that's what, and now yeah. they're gone and so let's let's hit on that a little bit so uh, so there's been a handful of of places thrown out there. Uh, so we got San Antonio, we have Cal Stanford, we have sharing a stadium with, uh, with the Niners at Levi's, we have Vegas, we have San Diego at Qualcomm, uh, on the, on the table. What do you think is the most likely scenario? Can like I, can I, it's, it's a weird thing. I, maybe I'm alone here. So, so Raider fans, they're, they're on the feed. You guys are listening to us. Let me know if I'm not alone here. I would love for them to take over Qualcomm stadium. Because, wouldn't be the first time be, be, exactly exactly that's it's it's called south oakland for a reason yeah. and it would be great if like you know there was a hashtag called south oakland that they're playing there for like two years oh or whatever gosh, it is that'd be amazing. they could take that over they always have taken it over i remember back in what was it uh the when they were in la when you tried to buy tickets to go see uh, the raiders play uh, in san diego san diego got smart and said if you're gonna buy a ticket for that game you gotta buy a ticket for another game you know there was that thing oh that, right right yeah, right right yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh -huh. i would they stay in california they're still there. I would love for them, even if that stadium's still kind of crappy, because I think it is. I don't know if it's run down. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's better than the Oakland it's, stadium. It's a, it's a half a step better than Oakland. Yeah, so absolutely. so let me, let me, I want to know what you guys think. Am I off base here? Take over Qualcomm Stadium, rename it South Oakland, whatever it is. Just take it over. I would love it. That would be cool. I'm, I'm with you. I think that makes the most sense, even though probably from a facility perspective, the most sense is Levi's stadium like because that yeah. place was built to have mm -hmm. two teams yep. in it 
it's the logistics and the infrastructure and everything is already in place. That would be my it's second choice. still the Bay Area. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. look, I get it. I don't want them playing in a stadium with red seats either. And and I don't. no one wants the team to be second fiddle to the freaking Niners. Yeah. I get that. I, you know what, good. though? I don't know if they would be second fiddle if they did. Well, that's are, true. You know? That's a great point. <laughs> that's a great point also. Absolutely. But uh looks like Qualcomm is probably the, the, the consensus, at least the majority favorite there. Yeah, hashtag. Uh, Qualcomm 2019, yeah, Izzy. Qual- there you go. Absolutely. So that very, very cool. All right. So Kev. Uh, so before we let's, we'll hit a couple more topics. But before we do, tell us a little bit about what you do. Tell us about your network. Let's uh, before we talk more about the Raiders. Tell us about the the Fandom Podcast Network, which is your podcast network. Yeah, I am uh, the co-founder of the Fandom Podcast Network. You can search for that on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play. We're all on, on most of the podcast catchers. Uh, and my uh, co-founder, uh, Kyle Wagner, we started this back in uh, 2015. And we wanted to do, instead of just doing one podcast, we wanted to have a network where we had several different shows because, yes, I'm a Raiders fan. Yes, I'm a Star Wars fan, Star Trek we were like, okay, what are we going to do? We wanted to have a network so we can cover all of that, basically. And we have several shows on the network. Our main show is called Culture Clash. It's our weekly fandom news show. We talk about all the geeky news. Uh, we talk Star Wars, Marvel, what have you. We also have uh, the End Zone, which is our NFL podcast yes. that both Kyle and I do. And that's interesting for you that don't know. I'm the Raider fan, and he's a Chiefs fan. Yes. So things get really interesting there. <laughs> uh, and we also do a few. Uh, uh, we also do a few shows in the off season. You know, whether it's uh, you know talking about the Super Bowl that just happened or you know uh, free agents and the draft we do that as well a couple of other popular shows I'm the uh, the host of uh, Blood of Kings uh, the Highlander podcast I'm a huge Highlander fan one of my high, one of my biggest fans is this Highlander I recently went to Scotland and visited a lot of filming locations with my fiance Aaron because we met through that through that fandom uh, we also have Couch Potato Theater where we discover all, and talk about all of the uh, uh, classic uh, movies like you know a lot of uh, pop culture movies a lot of uh, cult classics and we, we kind of talk about one do a little retrospective on it we do time warp where we celebrate certain fandoms like right now we're doing the movies of 1985 uh we just recorded the part four of it that's coming out next year we're going to be doing so does it just back to the future non-stop <laughs> that was the one that ruled it yes but command commando came out that year i mean a bunch of great films came out that year uh next year we're going to be covering uh 1993 because they just celebrated their 25th anniversary oh. a lot of good movies came out in 93 and then of course one of the recent shows is the hair metal podcast yeah which I've had you on. Yeah. I'm a big hair metal fan from back in the 80s, and so we talk about all of those bands that uh, came up during that time and were popular. We also have a Doctor Who podcast, Type 40, and one of our other new ones as well, my buddy Adam from Australia, we have uh, Lethal Mullet, where he talks about uh, the action movies from the 1980s. That, so, let me tell you, the names of your shows are great. <laughs> Lethal Mullet might be the best of them all. Isn't it great? Lethal <laughs> Mullet is fantastic for an 80s action movie title. Yes. That, yes. that is fantastic. Fantastic, man. That is uh, well. Uh, appreciate all all your hard work on on the Phantom Podcast Network. Y'all check him out. Check out Kevin the Raider Nerd. They're great. Uh, they're, it's an awesome network. And and I'm not saying this uh, just to to be fluffy here. I mean it. Your quality of your shows, the content, the audio quality, everything is awesome. Thank and, you. I appreciate and, that, man. And it's um you know there's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of and it's nowadays it's not hard to podcast you know you can flip on your iphone or your android phone or whatever and you can call it a podcast but to to truly produce a show is a whole nother story and so you guys produce shows it's Mm. great just everything about it from the like i said the 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 content and the quality of it is is great and uh the hair metal podcast has been a blast so kevin and i the first time uh we did cinderella tesla and uh and then and then who was our, our our closer on that one it was uh, poison. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, so it was yeah. poison on that one. So that was our closer. And then uh, we're going to do an, actually another one this week. And that will be up whenever, whenever. Uh, I'm not sure when Kevin's going to post it, but we're going to do uh, Skid Row and Guns N' Roses. That's right, man. buddy. <laughs> oh, this is going to be awesome. So anyway, so definitely ch- check out uh, Kevin and check out the, the, the Phantom Podcast Network. They do awesome stuff. And one last thing, their football show, The End Zone, my favorite thing that you guys do <laughs> is your, quote, mediocre football and fantasy football advice. It's very mediocre. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome all right well kevin let's hit a couple more topics before we get out of here um tell me what your biggest surprise good or bad what's been your biggest surprise this year as far as the raiders season goes Ah, uh, jeez, biggest surprise 
Um, I can't really say much for the team. It's hard. Uh, I, you know what? May, okay, all the moves. That's the biggest surprise. All the moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's the biggest surprise. Yeah, well, no one expected Mac and Cooper to not be part of this team yes, anymore. Yes, you know, I we had a feeling McKenzie was kind of on the outs, but you know, we thought he'd at least ride through the season. You know, right, right. Uh, but what's really kind of surprised me is how Raider Nation has kind of leaned on itself. You know, with other uh, fellow Raider Nation, you know, and it's, I think it's just made us stronger going through this I kind agree. of crap season. You know, yeah. <laughs> you I know? I agree. And you know, what's funny is that, uh, like we mentioned about Derek Carr, you know, your your character is defined partly by how you react when things are tough. Well, here you go, Raider Nation. Like, you know what I mean? How do we as fans do we complete? Now, granted, a lot of folks, and I'll put myself in there too. A lot of us kind of lost our minds early on because early on it was like it was it was so jarring. Because it, it didn't go as we expected it was going to go. We, I mean, we didn't... were expecting a winning season. Yes. We were expecting the savior coming back, yes. you know, Gruden himself, you yep. know, and we had such high expectations. Such high expectations. Absolutely. So uh, th- that was definitely definitely a, a shock when when all the moves happened, especially on the heels of, of not being as, co- as competitive. All right. So we got the draft coming up. Uh, are you coming up for the draft? Uh, it's in Nashville. Uh, I don't think so because I got a trip already planned. Oh, okay. Is it, All isn't, right. that eight, isn't that late, eight, late April? It's the end of April. It's yeah. like the 25th through the 27th yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I'm going to be out of town, unfortunately. Okay. Otherwise, I would be there. Okay. Well, yeah. well we're going to be there. The radios, radios, the Raiders fan radio microphones will be live. I've actually just started uh, t- another friend of ours uh, that you met at the Titans game. Jeff the Titans fan. Do you remember yeah, him? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I talked to Jeff nice. the Titans fan yesterday and we've already started he's going to kind of uh for lack of a better word kind of host us a little bit as uh, as far as our location goes and uh, it's going to be really cool man we got a lot of cool stuff in the works for the draft this year um so we will definitely be live for that you'll get a lot of this we're going to get a lot of of live streaming for for the draft that's gonna be sure should be really cool but uh so what do you think is our biggest position of need what do you think you know the raiders we're gonna have the three picks unfortunately it looks like the two of them are going to be kind of lower than what we had hoped for but they're still going to be first round picks so what do you think we do what's our biggest position of need to address in the draft uh defense 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 yeah defense and now apparently we need wide receivers too (laughs) (laughs) wasn't that weird it kind of felt like going into this year especially when we traded for switzer you know we had cooper nelson switzer seth martavis bryant yeah i'm like holy crap i'm like we're loaded at wide receiver i think the key is what's going to happen during free agency because I think that is going to really dictate on who we get. And that may be picks. where our defense comes from. Possibly, we, yes. I've been screaming yes. forever about inside linebacker. And so if we go and pull C.J. Mosley, uh, linebacker from the Ravens, if we go and pull him in, in, uh, in free agency, all of a sudden that conversation changes. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Pick so, up a certain running back? Who knows? Uh, you, know, you know, he's... He's an awful lot of money, and he's and he could be a potential headache, but he's a heck of a football player. <laughs> uh, Des Bryant, he's still around, right? Yeah, Des is still. Yeah, oh my gosh. So, but yeah, it's 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 going to be interesting for the uh, for the draft for sure. And there's so many dynamics going on uh, until we get there. So, all right, let me let's hit with one more here, uh, and then we'll uh, uh, before we wrap it up. So, Kevin, you're a world traveler. Yeah, I've been around. You mentioned your your fiance. She lives in where Australia. Is yes. she from Australia? Yes. Yeah, we're doing the long distance thing until we can. We're starting to figure that out. So hopefully and, she's going to be coming over here. And so, so yeah. you guys like meet in London, yep. and you like meet like you are yeah, Greenland. By the way, I don't think it's its own continent, bro. I got to call you on some of your geography. Well, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a numbers guy. I don't do math, and, I, and, and apparently the map is a struggle for me as that well. That was funny. After my, I was on last time. You're like, come on, Kevin, get to these countries, do it. <laughs> <laughs> but so you are, you are a, a, a globe trotter, Kevin. Yes, you yeah. are a Raiders yeah, I love it. I, it's it, globe trotter. It, 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 it's, uh, it's gotten into my blood, and the best part of it is when I can meet up with other Raider fans. Absolutely, so, yeah. and we got a lot of our uh, overseas fans. Uh, in the chat there. Let me shout them out the chat one more time. Dark Side Bricks, Kev is in there. The Raider Critique, uh, Big Raider Trucker, Emiliano is in there. Yeah. Chris Rubio, Raider Homer, Mojo Cantrell. Uh, let's see who else is in there. I can't scroll up. Steve is in there. Uh, so I appreciate you all uh, joining yes. us on this kind of impromptu uh, RFR Live morning show here. Good morning, Raider Nation, with, uh, with your old buddy Murph and Kevin, the Raider Nerd. So being that you're a globetrotter, being that you have traveled all over and you've seen the Raiders literally mm-hmm. uh, all over the world, if you could see them anywhere – where would you go? And I mean, anyway, it doesn't have to be a necessarily a historical football venue, but maybe could be, but 
Anywhere. I'll tell you right now, the most beautiful country I've ever visited, and so, sorry, Aaron, it's not Australia, even though it is nice. Uh, Scotland. Glasgow. There you go. Scotland. Yeah, buddy. Scot- <laughs> so is there a stadium there, or would you want to, oh, I'm sure would you is, want to yes. do it like Highlander style, man? <laughs> like Just kind of like at like a big meadow or some rolling hills or something, and just like, what would you do? Yeah, I, 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 sorry. I love that. I, I would love some, some great European country. That would be great. I have not been to Spain. I've only changed planes there. I'd love to maybe do that, or even I've been to uh, uh, France several times. That would be a great place because yeah, there's there's soccer stadiums all over the place, all over. Uh, right. Europe. Yeah. So yeah. they could definitely fill a house there. I know. I know Scotland could host it, and so I, I my first vote is see them in Scotland because I know some people there. <laughs> uh, they put on a party. <laughs> Stevie, Kev, there you go. <laughs> so well, and and so speaking of that, so I'll, let me let me mention one oh, more. Oh wait, hold thing. on. Speaking of Kevin, he says uh, the nerd is the ultimate honorary Scotland. Thank you, brother. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. So let, let's let's. Talk Touch on that real quick. If say the Raiders couldn't get a stadium done, stadium deal done at one of these other uh, locations we're talking about, and they did essentially pro- play abroad for a year, split their home schedule with mm-hmm. Mexico City and you know in in uh, in London. They better fix that field in Mexico though. Oh god, that that the field conditions w- yeah. w- would have been bad. Yeah, um, but do. You, what if we were the London Raiders for a year? That would be great because they think? would have. Be oh, cool? they, oh, I know some people that would lose their minds. Oh my god, that would be so fun because uh, now that other was it Tottenham Stadium should be done by now. Uh, yeah, that would be great. That would be yeah. cool, right? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that would be that would be pretty. Yeah, neat Stevie, to be can I crash on your your couch for a while? That'd be great. <laughs> so, all right, well, guys, we'll appreciate you joining us here for this impromptu. Uh, RFR Live, our little Good Morning Raider Nation. <laughs> I love that Just Win Johnny Nerd Out Nation. I love it. <laughs> ah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, definitely. Uh, check check out what Ke- Kevin's stuff, man. Definitely support what he's doing. He's a great representative uh, of Raider Nation, great ambassador for Raider Nation. Uh, and, uh, it, of course, in his podcast network is fantastic, and the show's there, which is Fandom Podcast Network, and that is – give him the website, Kevin, because I always forget The it. Fandom Podcast Network. Uh, there, our master feed is, uh, is at uh, fpnet podbean.com and if go. you want to reach me directly you can do that on on instagram and twitter uh spartan underscore phoenix a little demolition man reference there spartan underscore phoenix yeah. and you know do you want to tell came out in 1993 by the way was it really oh there you go there yeah, you go taco bell won the food wars <laughs> except in australia it was uh they changed it to um uh pizza hut which is weird yeah. oh did they really yeah yeah because i don't know something with the rights or something i don't know oh wow okay yeah. now, now i remember when we first met you sunny asked you about what the shells were for yes yeah yeah. Do you want any comment on the shells? Not here, no. No, no, no can't, sorry. Can't. <laughs> the three seashells, nope. <laughs> three but, all right, well, thank you all again very much for joining us yes. here for this. This has been a lot of fun. And uh, and so coming up this week, so tonight we'll release the new episode of the Fan Club Blitz. So check out our, our folks uh, from the Fan Club Blitz. That is uh, the guys up there in um, at the Irish Cottage Inn, which is the uh, the home base for the New Jersey chapter of the Black Hole. I got to go visit those and guys. So, I know, me too. I, I talked to Chuck uh, 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 just yesterday, and I kind of made mention of that, that I would love to get up there to Jersey. So here's an interesting thing. So, And for all you all that are um, East Coast Raider fans as well, it's looking like the schedule is going to play out that we're going to play at the Jets next year. Ooh. So that could be interesting. So I would love to go see the Raiders play at MetLife, play against the Jets. That would be a blast and would be an absolute blast to link up with the with uh, the Black Hole, New Jersey, mm-hmm. and be part of that crew. got a lot crew. of guys there in Manhattan, too, that'll uh, uh, we'll uh, Whether the Silver time. and Black Empire yeah, yeah, and all yeah. those guys. So that would be yeah. really, really cool then. So I met, I met a lot of those guys, man. They're so much fun. Have you really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, next year if we get an opportunity to, to, to travel and Uncle Mosh and I uh, circle one on the ca- – of course, it all depends on where it goes in the calendar, right? Yeah. It all depends on where <laughs> – uh, but if there's a game, that, that might be – be my pick next year for especially if we do a road game that will that would be amazing to play uh at the jet so anyway so hopefully that'll that'll work out all right guys thank you again for joining us and uh go raiders